Jesus went down the earth to give us authority over the devil. He fought our fight for us. See, we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. We, you hear that a lot. We're fighting from victory. And we have power and authority over the devil. Amen. If you don't know that, by now you haven't been here very long. We have power over the devil. And I believe that we have power over circumstances. I believe that God gives us that God-given authority. He gives that to us. And I believe when Christ rose from the dead, amen, he gave us victory. He triumphed openly over the enemy, taking his throne or taking his crown from him and giving it to who? He gave it to the church. And the Bible tells us that we've been seated with him in heavenly places because he ascended. He that ascended first descended, and now he sits at the right hand of the Father. Philippians, the second chapter, if you'll stand with me for just a moment, one verse. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and the things of earth and things under the earth. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in, in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth. Amen. That's, that's authority. Amen. That'll make it rain. Amen. That'll make it rain. Yeah. Father, I ask you, dear God, Lord, to speak through my mouth. I ask you, dear God, to change our lives through your word. Dear God, may, us, may we all realize what has been handed to us, given to us, by the price that you paid. Lord, no one is good enough. Dear God, that's why it's grace. But I thank you, dear God, for choosing us, adopting us, Lord, as your own. You have made us kids, dear God, of you. Lord, our, your children. And I thank you, dear God, we've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Daddy God, Abba Father. And we thank you, dear God, for your goodness upon us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You can be seated. Uh, today and tonight, I want to speak to you just for a few moments on more than expected, more than expected. Have you ever got more than you expected? Amen? Come on, have you ever just got more than you expected? You got a gift and you expected one thing, and my goodness, it's more than that. Amen? More than that. Because, uh, and when we talk about tonight, we're talking about having more than expected. I'm going to take you to Matthew, the 28th chapter, the 18th verse. That Jesus approached and breaking the silence said to them, all authority, power, and rule. I'm going to amplify it. All authority, all power, and rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So then make, then make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you all the days, perpetually, uninformally, un I formally, and on every occasion, to the very close and consummation of age, amen. Simply let it be. So the Lord is just simply saying, I, all the rule and authority has given to me, and now I give it to you. Jesus was telling his followers that the authority and power that I have, now I give unto you. He said, go and continue to do my work, the work that I have begun. We understand that we are the body of Christ here on earth, and the Lord just simply said, I've got, I've, I've got all the authority. I've won it back. I've paid the price for it, and now I give it to you. This is what he was telling his disciples. The authority that we have as believers in Christ is superior to the authority in Adam, of Adam. We have everything back that he lost. Let that savor just a moment. We have everything back that he lost and much more, more than they expected. We now have authority over the demonic realm. That's not news to you. You must understand that you don't have to spend time praying that the devil goes or praying that God takes the devil because that's not, a, that's not even a scriptural prayer. 
We're not to pray that God removes Satan from us or that the attacks from us. That's our responsibility. That's our fight. He's already won the fight. All we have to do is exercise the authority. It's like a police officer. Amen. The badge is symbolic of the authority that he has or she has, and the gun is the power or the might. Amen. Authority and power. We've been given authority and power. Amen. The authority is through the name of Jesus. The power is the Holy Ghost that lives with inside of us. So we have power to do life. I don't know about you, but I need, I need the Holy Ghost power to live life. I need that. I need that to be a dad. I need that to be a pastor. I need that to be a husband. I need the Holy Ghost power every day in my life. We've been given that authority and power. When the enemy comes up on us and we don't know who we are, we will shrink under his pressure and start not opening our mouth. Instead of, uh, uh, instead of opening our mouth, we'll bow to his direction or to his oppression. And I believe that this is the season that God is raising his men and women up to take and exercise the authority that we have been given. Come on, pull out the badge, wear it openly. Amen. Jesus paid the price for it, and he gave that to his, his saints, his believers. Matthew 10, 1 says this, And when he had called unto, unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Let's look at the seventh chapter. It says this. This is what Jesus is telling to his disciples. It was before he gave them power, and he says, As ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. There's some that think that this all passed with the apostles. Why would God do that? Amen. We're going to need him today. Right, we need him today more than we need him ever. This did not disappear with the apostles, nor the disciples. Amen. It didn't disappear with that. It's just been made more alive after his ascension. He did this before his ascension. Amen. Before him putting the Holy Spirit upon or in them, he had the, they had the Holy Spirit upon them at this point, and he gave them power. He said, "I'm going to give you a taste of what it's going to be like when I'm gone." Amen? I'm going to give you just a little taste of what it's going to be. He said, now go preach. Let me tell you this. If you don't think you can preach, you understand that you can't, but God can through you. All you have to do is simply trust him, open up his mouth. Preaching, amen, or prophesying is simply speaking on the inspiration of God. I believe that everybody has a place, everybody has a platform, amen? If you're waiting on this platform or that platform, must understand that those things will delay but you always have a platform, whether it's Facebook, amen, or just simply face-to-face, -face, you have a platform wherever you go. And I believe that as, as God puts words in your mouth, you speak them out, amen, and he'll deliver the captives, amen, through your very lips. He said, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That means the Holy Spirit is here. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you receive freely you give. I want to add this real quickly. The Lord never has told us to pray for the sick. Amen. I'm talking about pray that people get healed. If you show it to me in the scripture, amen, I'll stand corrected. Amen. He said lay hands on them, pray. Amen. But understand this, he told us to heal the sick. Do we do that in our own power? Absolutely not. We do that in the power of the Holy Ghost that's upon us. We take authority over sickness. I believe that most sickness, a lot of sickness, has come straight, straight from the hell. Amen? Straight from hell. Some sickness comes right from the devil, and we take authority over that. We take authority over that sickness, and I believe that we have been given the authority and the power to lay hands on the sick, and the Bible said they shall recover. What it says, cleanse the leper. It didn't say to pray for the leopard. It said cleanse them. We, we do that through being the hands and feet of Jesus. We do that through the power of the Holy Ghost. Raise the dead. That's a big one, right? That's a big one. That's, that's a big one. I promise you. I mean, I mean, believe that's a big one. My wife and I experienced that in my office. 
Amen. A woman died in our arms. Is that correct? She died in our arms as we was ministering freedom to her. You talking about drawing up. Amen. Because all I could think about, lawsuit, lawsuit. Amen. We killed this woman right here in my office. True story. At this, at the, out of my mouth, I'm speaking, come on, I'm speaking power and authority. In the name of Jesus, I speak life. I speak life into you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the authority is coming out of my mouth. But my, in my mind, I was going, whoo, you better get her out of here. Get her out of here. Amen. Amen. Slip her out on the sidewalk. She never was in your office. Man, I said, I'm just telling you, it's a big deal. Boy, when she took a breath, it seemed like 30 minutes. And she took a breath, I was like, <gasps> amen. I, I, I was going, come on, Jesus, yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus, amen, amen. Amen, when she come back, we said, we're done today. Don't you ever come back, amen. True story. That's a big one. But I believe God gives us, gives us those opportunities to let us know that those things are for us. Amen? Those things are for us. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received. Freely give. I'm going to take you to, book, to the book of Ephesians and the third chapter, if you would. I'm going to read an Amplified. It's long and amplified. Third chapter, 14th verse. For this reason, seeing the greatness of his plan by which you are built together in Christ. I want to dwell there for you. For this reason, seeing the greatness of his plan by which you are built together in Christ. As Jeremiah says, I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Prosper and give you an expected end. I would say that God's got a plan for your life. He's got a perfect plan, all mapped out. It's not all about you. It is about you, but it's not all about you. He's got a plan that's mapped out. Even though you give up on it, he don't give up. He don't give up on the plan that he has. For you. The plan which you are built together in Christ. I bow my knees before the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ for whom every family in heaven and upon earth is named, that Father from whom all fatherhood takes its title and derives its name. May he grant you out of, his, out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself dwelling in the innermost being and personality. May Christ through your, through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make a permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in the love and founded securely on love that you may have the power and be strong, be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that, of that love what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth of it that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourself the love of Christ, which is far, far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God, may, may have the richest measure of divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God's himself. Now to him who is who by, in consequence of the action of his power that is at work in us, be able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far above and uh, far over and above all that we could dare to ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Come on, give God some praise for the loud version. Amen.
Let's go now to the New Living Translation, same chapter. When I think of all this, I fall on my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. We'll stop there. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources. God's not limited by your resources. Nor is he limited by your faith. But I believe that he sent me here tonight to tell you that he's unlimited no matter what you need or what you lack. He's not unlimited. I had Sister Kay Sunday night. She said, God's not wringing his hands. Nothing catches him off. Nothing catches him. When we come to the end of our resources, he's still got plenty to go. Above and beyond, more than we can ask or think. His unlimited resources, he will empower you from the inner man through the Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in our hearts as you trust him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ through through it too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church, in Christ Jesus, through all generations forever. Amen. And I don't want you to understand something. I, I, I believe that we're living in a time that God is raising his church up. He wants us to believe deeper than we've ever believed. I believe that we have a time that the church is to raise up, not quit, not back up, not rely upon somebody else, or not rely upon our government. Amen? It never was meant to be that way. The church should be the driving force in the nation. Nobody believes that. I, I, and I do. I believe that that all through the, all through the ages, I believe that we, we can't blame uh, this one or that one or an administration, we can't blame that. Listen, I believe that the blame goes back to us. I believe from not walking in our authority. I do. And I, I'm, I'm saying not as this church as a, as a whole, but I'm talking about church as a whole because I'm going to tell you this, we should have been having revival, steady revival ever since the day of Pentecost. And somewhere down, somewhere down, the, down the pipelines, we, we come to the place of been waiting on Jesus to return and we quit working. And this has been the prayer. Oh, Lord, come today. Oh, Lord, come today. Is there anything wrong with it? No. I mean, I want to be in heaven too. I don't want to leave today. Amen? But for years and years, we've just been setting. We, we wrote songs about them over and over. There's whole hymnals full of when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. And so I, there's nothing wrong with those songs. I dreamed and went to a city called Glory. All right? I cried, bowed on my knees and cried, hold it. There's nothing wrong with those songs. But that's been the focus all this time for ages and ages and ages. The church has been sitting waiting for the Lord to come back. And we've been sitting on our blessed assurance. I'm just saying, waiting for his appearance. And he said this, you're my body, you're my hand. This is the hour that he shows himself to us. I'm, I'm done. I got one more scripture. The Lord woke me up early this morning. I'm going to share the dream, but he gave me a dream. With that dream, he gave me a revelation of, of the things to come. And he showed me 
the lives that will be changed and touched in the days ahead. It comes from responsibility. It does. I guess I woke my wife up this morning crying and praying because it, it affected me. It affected me all day. I'm excited, very excited about what's to come. And I believe that this church is going to be, I believe that everybody in it, God wants to use in a mighty way. It's going to come to us believing that he is who he says he is. Not doing our own thing, you know what I'm saying? But just digging deeper in our faith. Taking this scripture, right? You can take the book of Ephesians and dig it apart. I encourage you to do that. You hear me say it all the time. Take the book of Ephesians 1 through 3 and, and read it three times through. And dig that, get that deep down in your identity. And then read the next three chapters. And understand what Jesus Christ did for us. And the price has been paid. It's been put it. His spirit's been put in, been in, put it in you. Today, I believe that God wants us to take responsibility for the world. I'm not talking about this church and lot out for the world. We've been given responsibility, Amen, for our kids. How about let's, let's, let's focus on our Jerusalem, our kids. Our spouses, our Sunday school group, the ones we pick up, the ones we minister to, our jobs, your employees, fellow workers. I believe that we've been given a responsibility to just simply be the body. Body of Christ. And I believe that God wants to heal, restore, deliver. For a long time, the church has shied away from deliverance because it's weird. What we have, we have a church that's found. Because the churches have said, we'll do that, we won't do this. Come on, church. Play soft. Ask you to stand with me. I'm, I'm preaching to myself. You said, Pastor, why don't you just do that in your office and give us something? Because it's for every one of us. I believe some from a little more than others. But if we know him, we know that he has a call in our life. And I believe everybody has one. He's wanting to do more than you expect. He is. Philippians 1 6 says this being confident in this very thing. That he that had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Jesus finishes what he starts, and he has your best interest in mind.